Hello class! So it's me again, Engineer Chandray Pactoranan. So this time, ang pag-uusapan naman natin ay all about the moment area theorems. So sige, simulan na natin class ang ating discussion. So we have two theorems here, no? So what is the, the theorem number one? So liitan ko lang to, no? So according to the first moment area theorem class, the change in slope between two points is equal to the area of the M over EI diagram or moment diagram na create natin kanina divided by the flexural rigidity of the beam between these two points. Okay, no? So, according dito, kung meron tayong dalawang tangent class, so, ito yung point A, then itong line na to class is the tangent at A, tapos ito yung point B, and itong tangent na to is tangent to point B. So, of course, di ba, may slope yung ating A class and meron ring slope yung point B. Okay? So, di ba, may mga slopes yan kung maalala nyo from the double integration method. So, according dito, the change in slope between these two points class. So, the theta B to A is equal to palaging right to left, no? Ang gagawin nyo, yung right point minus left point class. Ulitin ko yun, ha? Gusto ko yun i-emphasize. Right point or right, yung slope sa right end minus sa slope sa left end na point. So, since yung nasa kanan is yung point B, kaya ang mangyayari, palaging theta B or slope ng B minus slope ng A. So, ayan siya. So, ibig daw sabihin, the change of slope in these two points class is simply the area of this moment, no? The area of this one. So, yun lang. I-divide mo nga lang siya ng EI. So, area in the moment diagram for AB divided by EI. So, yun lang naman class ang ibig sabihin ng first theorem. So, napaka-straightforward niya, di ba? So, next tayo. The theorem number 2 class says that the deviation, ito yung medyo importante for the analysis sa deflection, no? The deviation of point A with respect to the slope at B is equal to the area of M over EI diagram multiplied with the distance of its centroid from point A. So, ulitin natin. Yung deviation brow nung point A with respect sa slope sa point B ay equal daw dun sa area ng M over EI diagram na imumultiply natin sa distance ng centroid nung area ng yun from point A. So, ang tanong, ano ba yung word na deviation? Kasi iba yun class sa deflection. Deviation is different from deflection. No? So, according dito, the term deviation means that the vertical distance of any point of the elastic curve from the tangent line of any other chosen point in the same curve. It is positive if the point is above the tangent line while it is negative if the point is below the tangent line. So gusto ko yun i-emphasize. Yung deviation is the vertical distance nung any point, nung isang point, let's say point A, from the other point, from the slope, sorry, from the slope or from the tangent line of any other point. So, itong paragraph na to, medyo nakakalito siyang um, i-interpret, pero gagabayan tayo ngayon ng figure sa next slide para mas maintindihan natin yung word na deviation. So, ito yun, class. So, nilagay ko, deviation of A with respect to B and deviation of B with respect to A. So, pag sinabi natin na deviation of A with respect to B class, no, ang ibig sabihin, kung ito yung point class, ito na yung point A from the elastic curve, ang gusto niya nga sabihin, the vertical distance of point A with reference sa tangent line drawn from point B. So, I hope that is clear, no? Ulitin natin ang meaning ng deviation. Ang deviation is the vertical distance of that point in the elastic curve. So, vertical distance of point A with respect to the tangent line drawn from point B. So, that is deviation of A with respect to B. So, syempre, yung iba na may misinterpret yun, nababaliktad. And take note, ano naman yung ibig sabihin ng deviation of B with respect to to A. So, it means that is the vertical distance of point B in the elastic curve, this blue one, with reference sa tangent line drawn from point A class. So, I hope that is clear. And I need to make this clarified. The value of deviation of A with respect to B 
is not equal to the value of deviation of B with respect to A. Iba class ang numerical values nila. Ulitin ko, the numerical value of deviation of A with respect to B, this blue one, is different or not equal to the deviation of B with respect to A. So, ano nga? Balikan natin yung slide, no? Paano natin daw kukumpitin? The deviation of point A with respect to the slope of B is equal to the area of the diagram multiplied with the distance of its centroid from A. So, although, ang consider pa rin natin class na area is between A and B, kapag ang tanong is deviation of A with respect to B, it means itong area na ito, imumultiply mo daw sa distance ng kanyang center of gravity with respect sa point A. So, di ba nga, para mas madali nyo matandaan, alin yung unang nakasulat? A or B? So, please, ano, um, focus your eyes in the mouse cursor. As since yung nakasulat is yung point A class, it means yung center of gravity, yung distance niya from point A, yun yung imumultiply natin sa area dito. So, I hope that is clear. And that is the way to determine the deviation of A with respect to the tangent at B. So, in reverse, the deviation of B with respect to the tangent at A. So, yun lang, since yung B na class ang unang nakasulat, same, ang area pa rin natin class na consider is ito. However, the center of gravity to be considered, yung distance niya ngayon dapat with respect na class sa point B. Okay? So, ito yung difference ni deviation of A with respect to B and ni deviation of B with respect to A. However, no, at least alam nyo na kung anong ibig sabihin ng deviation. And uulitin ko, deviation is different from deflection. Kasi kung titingnan nyo class dito sa ating elastic curve, ito yung dapat yung deflection at A. And ito dapat yung deflection ng B. Diba? So, this ano, this red one. Okay? So, Gusto ko yun i-clarify for the last time. Deviation is different from deflection. So, I hope that is clear. So, since nagawa na natin ng ano, um, introduction regarding the two theorems, before tayo mag-solve class ng isang example, um, re-recall lang natin yung ating geometry regarding sa area and center of gravity class. Kasi, yun na ang gagamitin natin ngayon. Kaya nga, ito tinawag na geometric methods kasi gagamitin natin yung mga principle sa geometry. Okay? So, ito yung mga tatandaan yung formulas for area and center of gravity. Okay? So, sige, start natin. So, cheat sheet for the area and centroid of different moment diagrams. Okay? Kapag ang shape ay rectangle, usually, di ba, nakikreate itong rectangle kapag moment, no? Kung maalala nyo last time, doon sa ating moment diagram by parts, ang nakikreate niyang shape ay rectangle. So, yun, degree niya is zero, which is rectangular nga. So, kapag ang nakreate na moment diagram ay rectangle, the area of this one is simply L times H. So, madali lang naman yan. And the center of gravity of that one is kalahati nga ng L. Which is napaka self-explanatory, no? Kasi um, sobrang memorize mo na yung triangle. So, ito naman, itong triangular load, di ba? Last time, maalala nyo paano tayo nagkakaroon ng triangular sa moment diagram kapag merong concentrated loads, di ba? So, dapat familiar ka na nito, no? So, kapag may concentrated loads, ayon, meron tayong triangular, and the area of the triangle is one half length times height. So, the length is this one, and ito yung height. And yung kanyang center of gravity with reference to this point, no? Tatawagin natin to as vertex, no? With respect to the vertex, that is two-thirds ng length. I hope that is clear. And by the way, di ba nga, ang triangular is a first degree curve, di ba? So, kasi linear equation siya. So, I hope that is clear. No? So, pakitandaan itong mga formula. Meron pa tayong consider For the second degree, so this is what? A second degree curve, eh usually, di ba, kapag meron tayong um, uniformly distributed, sulat ko, no? Kapag yung ating ano ay uniformly distributed, automatic pala ito yung vertex automatic, ganito yung nagiging shape class ng ating moment diagram. So, this is what? A spandrel of the parabola. So, this is not a parabola. 
ispandrel lang to o pasobra lang. So, kung maalala nyo sa solid geometry, may parabola tayo, ba diba? So, parabola. Tapos, nandito yan. Um, ito yung area yung kinoconsider natin. This is the spandrel class. So, yung sobra. I hope that is clear. Okay? So, ito yung spandrel of the parabola kasi nga second degree. And its area sa formula natin is one third ng length times height. So, this time, one third ng length times height siya. And its center of gravity from the vertex is three fourths ng length. Okay? So, for the third degree, this time, this is a third degree curve class. So, kapag third degree, degree meron tayong triangular load. ba? Diba? So, dapat familiar kayo doon. Okay, no? So, nakikreate ang mga third degree load, uh, third degree curve kapag may triangular load. So, this is a spandrel of a cubic curve. So, ang area niya ay one-fourth ng LH. So, yun yung kanyang formula ng area. And yung kanyang center of gravity ay four-fifth of L with respect nga sa point na ito or simply vertex. Okay? So, to generalize this formula class, actually, may general approach tayo. Tingnan nyo, no? may mga degrees tayo dyan. So, the general formula for the degree N, ito no, spandrel with a degree N. So, ang formula niya is for area, 1 over N plus 1 ng L times H. So, i-check nga natin siya sa parabola, no? This is a second degree sa parabola, right? So, therefore, the degree is 2, i-substitute mo, 1 over 2 plus 1, which is 1 third L times H. So, pag chinek natin sa spandrel, 1 third LH siya. So, kung ayaw nyo nang mag-memorize ng husto. For the case of centroid, yun na lang, N plus 1 over N plus 2 times L. So, kung parabola nga, let's say 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 2 is 4, so this is 3 fourths ng L. So, check nga natin siya. So, ayan, 3 fourths ng L. So, for the third degree curve, a degree is 3, so, check natin, 1 over 3 plus 1 L times H. So, tama naman siya, class 1 over 4 LH siya, nandito. And for the distance of the center of gravity, 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, so 4 fifths ng L. So, balikan natin. So, yes, tama siya. So, this is the general formula class for all spandrel with a degree N. Okay, so I hope that is clear. <clears throat> so, next tayo. Um, before we solve a problem, ang mangyayari, ratio and proportions tayo class for different spandrel. So, ganito lang siya for first degree, triangle. So, although ratio and proportion lang naman to, di ba? O, x sub 1 over y sub 1 is equal to x sub 2, y sub 2. Di ba? So, x sub 1, y sub 1 equals x sub 2, y sub 2. However, tandaan nyo na itong shaded portion is still a triangle. Diba? So, napaka-importante niyan ngayon. So, itong shaded natin is considered pa rin class as a triangle. However, kapag ang degree na ng curve is second degree, parabola, ang mangyayari, magiging x sub 1 squared over y sub 1 is equal to x sub 2 squared over y sub 2. Okay? So, ang tawag nga natin dito, kung maalala nyo sa inyong analytic geometry or surveying, is what? A squared property of parabola. So, SPP. Squared property of parabola. Kaya lang, ako lang, tala, palatandaan ko lang dyan, since second degree siya class, malamang yung X naka-squared lang siya. Ganun lang. O, lahat ng X naka-squared, pero yung Y hindi siya naka-squared. And tandaan nyo, itong shaded na to class is still a spandrel. So, bakit ko ba ini-specify na spandrel pa siya? Kasi kung spandrel pa rin to class ng parabola, ang kanyang magiging area ay still one third Ang base niya is x sub 1, y sub 1, di ba? So, applicable pa rin yung formula ng area. At the same time, yung center of gravity nitong shaded region is 3 fourths, di ba nga? 3 fourths ng x sub 1. So, dapat alam mo kung alin na yung magiging spandrel or hindi. However, this one, kahit putulin natin to, which is ito, rectangle, walang problema. Ito, class, gusto kong i-emphasize sa point na ito, na hindi ito spandrel. Sorry. Nagkamali ako ng spelling. Ulitin ko. Itong specific region na to class, hindi na yan spandrel. Bakit ko ba yan ini-emphasize ngayon sa inyo? Kasi yung iba, nagkakamali, akala nila applicable pa yung one-third base times height dito. No. This is not a spandrel and 
Kumbaga, hindi mo siya pwedeng gamitin. Even nga the centroid, hindi siya pwede. So, kapag nag-cut ka ng portion for the purpose of ratio and proportion, ito lang yung magiging spandrel kasi nando doon yung vertex niya. Okay? And that is true not just in parabola class. Even in the third degree curve. That is true. So, for the third degree curve, nandito siya class, no? Um, this is ganun lang. As I said earlier, x sub 1 over y sub 1, kaya lang since third degree, ang exponent niya na lang ay 3. Okay? So, therefore, this one is still a spandrel. Okay, no? Kaya lang, pag pinutol mo dito, of course, ito rectangle, walang problema. Ito, uulitin ko, hindi na to class a spandrel. Okay? So, I hope that is clear for the ratio and proportion. And to generalize ulit for the degree of the curve, o nth degree, di ba? So, ganun lang. May pattern din lang naman siya. X sub 1 raised to n, x sub 2 raised to n. But still, this is what? A spandrel pa rin yan. Okay, no? So, applicable nga ito sa triangles, di ba? Kasi ang triangle class is a first degree. Di ba? Kung first degree siya, it means 1 ito. E sa kang any number raised to the first power is just equal to itself. Di ba? So, ganun. At least may general formula na tayo for all is spandrel. Pero usually class, ang pinaka-complicated lang naman na curve na may encounter nyo dito is just the third degree curve. Hanggang dito lang naman. Bakit? Kasi most likely, triangular loads lang naman ang may encounter mo sa mga beams. Pihira naman dun class ang mga complicated na loading. So, hanggang triangular lang yan. So, hindi ka na mag-expect ng fourth degree curve dun no, or fifth degree. Kaya lang, to give you a general formula for future reference, maybe sa mathematics or other subjects, ito na. Okay, so I hope, no, naintindihan nyo itong ating discussion for the uh, moment area theorem. So, i-apply natin, class, yung natutunan natin dito sa video ito at the same time, yung pag-compute ng area at ng centroid para sa example number 4 na ipe-play after nito. So, please watch that and I hope nga for this lesson may natutunan kayo sa akin. So, thank you so much and ingat na lang sa lahat.